For me, the possibility of artificially engineering materials is extremely interesting. Not only can you really find new physical phenomenon, but you can actually do something that can have a big impact on society. You can really change society. So what is very important is that one has a lot of intuition about the materials. It's no clear roadmap to building a material with the properties that one wishes. So it's very important to be able to explore a wide range of materials and to make a lot of different structures in order to understand how the materials are working. Well, for me, I think uh, the most exciting research is where you're doing cutting-edge fundamental research. So you're sort of going places where nobody's been before, but at the same time, you have some sort of vision or pathway to turning that, whatever that might be, if you, if you are able to discover that material or phenomenon and turn that into a useful device. The IBM Almaden Research Center in California, research base of one of the world's most innovative solid-state physicists, Stuart Parkin. He has the extraordinary ability to transpose new physical phenomena and materials into technological applications. This unconventional researcher has thus revolutionized data storage worldwide and won international awards. It all started with simple punch paper tape. Then came magnetic disks and tapes, which boosted storage capacity. Floppy disks and hard disks meant that soon everyone had a computer. And now, a completely new type of electronics is about to expand memory capacity even more. Spintronics. In addition to the charge produced by electrons, Spintronics utilizes their spin, their intrinsic angular momentum, to magnetize storage media. So it's only in the last 10 years that this concept that electrons, which are spin polarized, can actually be a powerful force for manipulating magnetization, enabling us to change the orientation of magnetic materials. This is essentially the key to many new devices, memory and potentially logic devices, which sort of essentially take magnetism and go beyond that by utilizing electron spin to manipulate the magnetic moments themselves. The centerpiece of Spintronics is materials research. In Parkin's lab, 10,000 new compounds are produced and tested every year. To do so, scientists coat silicone disks with ultra-thin metal films. Even the tiniest changes in the structure of these monoatomic layers have dramatic effects. One particular metal set to generate major advances in technology is ruthenium. Parkin uses it to make an anti-magnetic coating for the recording head of hard disks. Ruthenium fixes the charge in one part of the sensor, while the other part is free to orient itself towards the magnetic field on the hard disk. In between is a conductor, and together they create a spin valve, which varies the electron spin and hence the current flow. I invented this concept and we invented the materials and the synthetic antiferromagnetic structure which is needed so that we get this very extreme responsiveness to tiny magnetic fields. And we, uh, IBM first introduced these uh, devices into magnetic disk drives in 1997. And basically within a few years we could increase the storage capacity of disk drives by about a thousandfold without changing their cost. So because of this Spintronic device, this has been the first important application of Spintronics and today it's the most important application to date of Spintronic uh, phenomena. Stuart Parkin is well on the way to revolutionizing solid state memory technology. His idea is to send the data shooting around a racetrack memory, which one day will combine the speed of flash memory devices with the data capacity of hard disks. The bits are stored in a nanowire in mobile magnetized regions. Spin polarized current pulses mean the data can be written and read at lightning speed, whereby the electron spin reverses the magnetic direction in individual atoms. By simply passing a current along a nanowire where we store these magnetic regions, we can move the magnetic information. And we do that without moving any atoms. We're simply rotating the magnetic moments of the individual atomic species in this wire to move this magnetic information. And we can move it backwards and forwards by changing the direction of the current. We 
can move these magnetic regions at about a thousand meters per second. And this would allow us to build devices on the scale of a few hundred picoseconds. So it could be even faster than conventional, many conventional memory technologies. The racetrack memory has been around for the last 10 years. Professor Parkin has started working on his next pioneering project, cognitive computing. Our brains use a million times less energy than a computer. So how could a thinking computer work? Drawing on his practical knowledge, this is a question Parkin will address at his new places of work, University Halle-Wittenberg and the Max Planck Institute of Microstructure Physics, where he wants to gather the best minds in the world for his human brain project. And I think uh, understanding how to build cognitive computing devices that will enable computing systems and architectures that think more like the brain, think more like ourselves, for many, many problems, I think this is going to be extremely important. So I think at Halle and the Max Planck, uh, that's a wonderful combination of institutes where we can explore on a, on a much longer time scale, but nevertheless with a perspective that we eventually want to build useful devices that we could really change the world of computing. Stuart Parkin assumes that a time will come when cognitive memory is able to reconfigure itself, like neural connections. Once again, the future of thinking computers rests on manufacturing technologies and new materials.